What's up guys and welcome back to The Other Side with Ian and Anna. In today's video, we're just gonna share with you the top 10 things to do in Paris. We spent a little over like 10 days there and had the best time ever. There are so many misconceptions about Paris, including that people are mean and that it's dirty and like whatever. I think it's one of the best cities in the entire world. So let's just get right into the video. Just walking around Paris, it kind of feels like you're on a movie set already, but if you have some extra time, try to seek out some famous movie locations. One of the reasons it's awesome to go to filming locations in Paris is because they're usually in unforgettable spots. On our very last day in Paris, we decided to hop on our motorbike and try to find as many filming locations from the show Emily in Paris on Netflix. Now, a lot of people love this show, a lot of people hate it. I actually enjoyed my time watching it because it was filmed in the heart of Paris and I, of course the fashion's cool, but it's a lot of drama and it's very controversial amongst Parisians. Nonetheless, so this show brought us to some great spots, starting with Montmartre, which is the 18th neighborhood. This is where you could walk along the most beautiful street in Paris and enjoy these stunning cafes at the top of the hill. No pas possible. Only to say pas possible. Another spot we enjoyed visiting was the interactive art gallery called Atelier des Lumières. I don't really know how to pronounce a lot of French words. If you're not really a big fan of art, I can guarantee you you will have an amazing time here and the art switches up daily, so you always have something new to enjoy. We visited so many other spots that we loved, including Emily's apartment and where she worked, and also Gabrielle's restaurant. So cool to see. Another movie that we are obsessed with is Midnight in Paris with Owen Wilson. You could actually go to this Shakespeare and Company bookstore right across from Notre Dame Cathedral. There's gonna be a long line out the door, but if you can get in there, it's really cool to see. Notre Dame Cathedral is one of the most iconic symbols in all of Paris, and roughly 13 million people come to visit it every year. But why is it so famous? Obviously, we know that it was built in the medieval times and that there are plenty of movies about it, including The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but honestly, I always wondered, like, what's the big deal? Truthfully, it's just a very old building, so it's seen a lot of history go down there. England's King Henry VI was crowned there, as well as Emperor Napoleon had his coronation there in 1804. Some argue that it set a precedent for Gothic architecture. Also, another famous part about this building is that it has an 8,000 pipe organ, and it is still there today despite the fire that happened in 2019. The heat kept building and rising until... Oh my God, these people just fell inside the church. We didn't get to go inside, which was really sad. I would have loved to take in a tour. One of my favorite parts about being there was there were a lot of street performers and really good ones, like the best ones I've ever seen, so it must be a huge hot spot. Ian, say hi. One, two, one, two, one, two. Seeing them with Notre Dame there, it was just such a vibe. So definitely head out that way. Now on to number eight, Arc de Triomphe. This structure is an iconic symbol of Paris that celebrates those who fought during the French Revolution and the many wars under Napoleon. Of course, this is probably on your list of things to do, but did you know you can go all the way to the top and get a 360 degree view of Paris? You can see the Eiffel Tower from up there, all the crazy roads, and this is definitely a spot to go during sunset. Don't do what we did. We tried to cross the crazy Circle Road and that was impossible. There's actually a hallway underneath the road that leads you all the way up to the Arc. But one of my favorite parts was driving around this circle on our moped. It was quite the thrill and I highly recommend it if you're just looking for something fun to do. A good idea would be visiting here after shopping till you drop on Champs-Elysees, which is that famous avenue with more shops than you could even imagine. Next up is number seven, learning how to bake baguettes. Not gonna lie, this one deserves to be very high on the list. You're not gonna go a day in Paris without seeing Parisians with baguettes underneath their arms around every single corner. And if you're gonna take anything away from this video, please take this. Eat as many baguettes as you can. More than 10 billion baguettes are sold in France every single year. That means on average, the French eat half a baguette per person every single day, which is just crazy. They take their baguettes so seriously that they even passed a law in 1993 stating that baguettes can only be made with the following ingredients. Wheat flour, water, yeast, and salt. We had the coolest experience to bake with one of the best bakers in all of Paris, Mahmoud M. Seti. He was the youngest baker to ever win the best baguette in Paris award in 2018, and he also won the best apple tart too. Oh. <laughs> mm. 
they gifted us one of those apple tarts right when we left and we finished that thing within 24 hours. I'm not kidding. By far the best thing I had in Paris and I highly recommend getting one when you go to Paris. Go to Mahmoud's Bakeries. He has five of them and I'll make sure to link the addresses below. Seeing all the hard work that goes into creating baguettes each and every day really made me appreciate them. Even though you can't do a tour with Mahmoud, I highly recommend checking out our video we made with him right up here. And if you're really interested in making baguettes and croissants, I'll link a tour below that has great reviews on Get Your Guide. Next up is number six, try all the food you can. Paris is constantly in the running for the culinary capital of the world. And let me tell you, it totally holds true to that title. I don't think we had one disappointing meal in all of Paris. There are two places I highly recommend you go to while you're in Paris. The first one is called Chez Du Monet, and you have to get beef bourguignon. Beef bourguignon is basically a French beef stew that is braised in red wine, also red burgundy, and beef stock. The first time I ever saw beef bourguignon was in the movie Julie and Julia, where Julie cooks through Julia Child's cookbook, and she has to make beef bourguignon, and I remember seeing it through the TV like, I cannot wait to have this one day. If you cannot get a reservation for dinner like we couldn't, definitely hit it up for lunch. It's all the same. As long as you get to try it, you will leave Paris a happy person. Next, of course, you have to stop at La Dore to get some macarons. Macarons are a French cookie. Like, I don't know how else to explain it, but <laughs> they actually originated in Italy. I feel like I have to say that so no one gets mad. But this recipe, this exact cookie, was coined by La Dore, which is a French bakery that makes macarons. Now they have them all over the world. I've had La Dore in New York City. We've even seen it in Bangkok. But you gotta go to one in Paris where it originated. You know what? You're gonna have to wait in line a little bit. Definitely worth it. You gotta get some. But long story short is just make sure you really have an open mind to trying anything in Paris. Walk into the bakery and grab a baguette in the morning. Get Pan Suisse, get croissants, eat. Ian and I literally just got cheese and bread and that's what we had every night for dinner. <laughs> Listen up everybody, I have some news. Cutting in real quick to introduce the sponsor of this video, Get Your Guide. Get Your Guide is a platform that offers 60,000 experiences in over 3,600 destinations. You can book tours, experiences, and even entrance fee tickets through this app. You get a QR code and a meeting location within the app, and you can also cancel 24 hours before your tour and you get all your money back. I'll make sure to link all of our favorite Paris experiences down in the description below. Thanks guys, now back to the video. Woo! Up next, number five climbing the Eiffel Tower. Okay, so to be completely honest, without sounding like a total brat, I did not really want to climb the Eiffel Tower. Just felt something very touristy. It kind of feels like a class trip vibe. Oh my God, I am so glad that we did it, but I think it's because we did it at such a good time. Our intention was to go up for sunset and stay till it gets dark, and that way we could see the Eiffel Tower sparkling. However, we did miss sunset a little bit. We got up there right as the sunset, so we still could see the 360 view of Paris being up there when the Eiffel Tower is sparkling. It was so romantic, so magical. I highly 100% recommend doing it, especially at night. People are cheering. There is this incredible nightlife energy in Paris. It's not even about drinking or anything. It's just so romantic. There is this huge argument about whether Paris is more beautiful in the day or the night, and I still can't tell you which one I think, but I do know if you go up the Eiffel tower before sunset, you will get to see a bird's eye view of Paris during the day and night. Let's get to number four, Versailles. By far one of my favorite museums in the world because it's a perfect mix between history, art, and nature. And it's also considered the biggest and most beautiful palace ever built. The famous Louvre right in the middle of Paris is where kings used to reign from, but Louis XIV created this estate to protect the monarchy. Three kings ruled from Versailles and the saying goes, Louis XIV built it, Louis XV got to enjoy it, and Louis the 16th had to pay for it. Louis the 16th was married to Marie Antoinette at the time and they both got beheaded when the French Revolution came. Another major historic event happened here in 1919 when the Treaty of Versailles was signed to end World War I. Just walking through the palace was worth every minute because the design and art was so elegant and astonishing. Of course, one of my favorite parts was the Hall of Mirrors where there was more than 350 mirrors and chandeliers hanging down a massive hallway. And we haven't even talked about the gardens yet, which covered more than 2,000 acres housing hundreds 
hundreds of fountains, statues, and intricate pathways. You can even ride a bike along the pathways here or take a boat out on the pond while gazing back at the massive palace. If you wanna do it right, I highly recommend a tour guide. They will get you through there in two or three hours and you'll hit up all the hot spots. I will link our favorite tour guide in the description below. Gabriella was amazing. Next up is one of my favorites, number three, a dinner cruise on the Seine River. The Seine River cruise was freaking amazing. It is definitely a must do when you're going to Paris. One of the coolest parts about Paris is pretty much all of the main attractions are in a line along the Seine. So like if you don't have a ton of time in Paris and you just wanna do this cruise, you can see the outside at least of the main attractions like the Louvre, Notre Dame, Eiffel Tower, everything. We booked our boat through our sponsor, Get Your Guide, who we love. I'm sure you see them in all of our videos. They're the best. And there's lots of different options. We booked a four course meal with champagne, wine, and rosé. Like They don't hold back. There's no stingy moments. We had so much fun. We started in the day and got to go until the Eiffel Tower was sparkling. Just an incredible view of the entire city. Very, very romantic. And one of the things that I love to do is at that point, we didn't get to like walk along the Seine at night yet. So we got to see like the locals live their life along the river as you're eating, drinking, having a romantic night. Now on to the most visited art museum in the world, the Louvre. This massive gallery spans 15 acres, and if you spent 30 seconds at each piece of art, it would take you five months to see everything. Another place that I recommend having a tour guide, but if you're not into tour guides, don't worry. I will still link a skip the line ticket in the description below so you don't have to stand in these massive lines. Of course, you have to see the Mona Lisa, even though it's been voted the world's most disappointing tourist attraction. Some of our favorite pieces were the coronation of Napoleon, Venus de Milo, and the winged victory of Samothrace, which is the inspiration behind the Nike logo. This is another must do in Paris. My brother hates museums and he said this place was mind blowing. So I think each and every one of you will love it. Best part is you only need around two hours here. So you could really stack up a lot in this day. Maybe go to the Eiffel Tower at night or the River Seine cruise. Maybe hit up all your museums in one day. So the rest of the time you can just sit around eating baguettes. And yeah, this sounds crazy, but the number one thing to do in Paris is just kind of try to live like a local. We had a picture picnic in front of the Eiffel Tower and that was one of my favorite things. It's so simple. I brought a picnic blanket from back home because I knew I wanted to do this. We were actually staying at this Airbnb which is also number one thing to do in Paris. It had an incredible view and that's going to be linked in the description below. You can see from the videos just how epic this place was and the coolest part was it was in a local area. Like there weren't a lot of tourists, a lot of the shops weren't English speakers so you knew it was pretty authentic. Best cheese best food was in this area, best bakeries, everything. So what we did was we had our motorbike because we ended up leaving that Airbnb. Came back to that area, grabbed our favorite cheeses, favorite breads, and we took it to the Eiffel Tower and had a little picnic. It was so romantic and fun and quaint. And other things, just walking around Paris, walking along the Seine, walking in the parks, it's just so magical. I loved having a motorbike. I know a lot of people aren't comfortable with riding motorbikes. The city is very easy to get around with Uber, Uber and also the train systems extremely doable but having a bike has gives you that freedom to just go anywhere and go a little bit further in less time so if you're not afraid to ride a motorbike in Paris highly recommend doing it I also say this like anywhere it is really nice to be able to orient yourself the best feeling ever is when you don't have to use Google Maps because you already know how to get around that's cool that makes you feel like you're a local that's a wrap if you enjoyed this video give us a like and comment down below it will help YouTube push this video video out to more travelers just like yourselves. If you didn't watch our best of Paris video, you can click right up here. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can follow us on Instagram if you want. See you guys in the next one. We love you and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh wait, au revoir.